Look out, footy's back. G'day, welcome to AFLW Today, your one-stop shop for all things AFLW. I'm your host, Alex Donnelly. As always, I'm joined by my co-host in, I think you've worn this jacket before, Bryony Dawson. <laughs> I ha- have I worn this one before? I'll have to check it the tape. It keeps me warm. It was yeah. only six degrees when I got it this morning, so very happy to be here. Honour and a privilege, Alex. And we actually have a professional in our midst today. After travelling all around Australia this week, calling games of footy, a big welcome in to Jess Webster. Welcome in, Jess. Woo! Thanks for having me, guys. Very happy to be here. Now, before we get rolling, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow AFL Today there. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, comment. Do you like the jacket? Do you not like the jacket? We'll take it all, of course. <laughs> AFL W Today across all the social platforms, Instagram, TikTok, X, and Facebook. On X, it's AFL W Today AU. And wherever you get a good podcast, but if you just Google AFLW Today Show, everything will come up there. All right. We've got the plugs out of the way. We had been tinkering with the format a little bit. Yes. I hated it because I just, <laughs> I'm, I, I self-loathe. So I've blown <laughs> it up this week. You spiraled. I spiral because yeah. I'm a perfectionist. So we were doing two minutes on each team and I didn't like that. Yep. So now we're just going to go back to good old standard game wraps. Great. Excellent. We finally got there. He took his time, but. Yeah, you just got to lead me there and make me think it's my idea. I know. Like any man. I know. Anyway, let's take a quick look. And it's not a great look this week because we are up to a full team of knee injuries. 22 ACLs across preseason into the season so far. I'm just going to handball this one of the professionals and you guys can go. I'm upset about it, Jess. Yeah. You can take my Chloe Malloy's. <laughs> you can take my Bonnie Two Goods. But you will not take my Ellie Blackburn's. <laughs> God damn you, AFLW. Um, when Ellie went down oh. and you, she she winced before she, like she, she's one of the toughest people. She yelped in playing. pain. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, oh, my heart like just broke into a million pieces. And you know Ellie well as well. It's just, that's devastating. It is, yeah, definitely. And thankfully I think she's avoided serious yeah. Uh, injury. But, yeah, when she went down and she let out that scream, I think everyone across the AFLW community just kind of held their collective breath and, oh. um, for a moment. So, yeah, it's 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 hard. I mean, I think it's an issue across all women's sports um, when it comes to ACL injuries and uh, we never like seeing it. Um, and I know they're doing their best to to figure out some of the the reasons why, and um, and hopefully we'll see less of them in the future. But uh, yeah, it's but fun. it's a whole team, like mm. it's a whole yeah. team, twenty two players. That's huge. And we were talking before the game. I wanted to. I, I was thinking about this over the weekend after you know more players doing ACLs at training, um, in games, everything like that. But I wanted to know what the stats were on what teams the ACLs were coming out of or the, or the big injuries. Yep. And we don't hear many coming out of North or Adelaide or Brisbane. And I'm wondering if those quality teams um, also have, you know, quality strength and conditioning. Yeah, that that is making a difference in them not doing that. Um, and you talked about, you know, it's about learning how to be tackled. It's about there's so many different factors. Mm. Other than the biometric, what angle women's knees are on because yeah. their pelvis is white, <laughs> like all this kind of stuff. But there is other game related stuff to it as well. I think so. I think you're right. I think there are many factors that go into it. Sometimes it's just rotten luck. Sometimes yep. it is just bad luck when you when you do your ACL. I would There's actually that you prefer could do. to blame someone. Jess, I know. If we well, could. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. Look, I think I think we all we all sometimes you know when we see Chloe Malloy go down, we're like, all right, who's to blame? Yeah. Who do we need to you know hang here? But um, yeah, I, I do think it's it. There, there's the medical side of it, um, and then I think there is a little bit of experience knowing how to be tackled and, mm-hmm. and those sorts of things, um, as well as you know good strength and conditioning yeah. at, at some of the established established clubs, um, experienced players. All, all that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's a bit that goes into it um, and hopefully we can find some answers soon. Let's put a lot of money and investment into it, please. It's not, they asked nicely, like, come on. We yeah. said please. I did. Yeah. <laughs> all right, AFLW today. How good is this from Port Adelaide? Sinead Goody joins the show. We have a great guest once again. We are very excited to have you on, Sinead, because we think you're an absolute legend. We've spoken about you every week this season, so we're very excited to have you um, not in the studio but on video through the powers of technology. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on. There's been a few shambles this morning, obviously, with technology already, but we'll strive through that and can't wait for it. It's the positive attitude that we need. This what is an great. athlete. What an athlete. What a person with the positives. <laughs> 
Uh, we'll get to the serious stuff off the top. Um, obviously, a bit of a tough loss over the weekend uh, to Fremantle. Sort of, how did you see sort of the last sort of fifteen minutes of that game play out? Obviously, letting the, that lead slip. Yeah, obviously, we worked pretty hard for the first three quarters to sort of get on top of them and have that bit of a lead. But obviously, with the conditions, they weren't very helpful. But at the end of the day, I mean, we both had two quarters with the wind and they Fremantle just wanted it a bit more. So it was a bit frustrating in that sense. So we're just looking to move on from that and sort of turn our attention to North this weekend. So have you had time to sort of uh, look over that game already or is it a bit too early in the week for that? No, nah, so... Um, it's an expectation that obviously over the weekend all of us will re-watch the game and take our own notes and then sort of today in the afternoon we'll head into the club and sort of review that game and, yeah, get some learnings out of it. And what do you think the learnings will be out of that? Like, you know, um, it was it was a bit of rough and tuffle and that kind of thing and um, what do you think personally uh, uh, some of the reasons why you didn't get across the line? Yeah, so obviously if you watch the game like in that last quarter, it obviously was in Frio's um, forward 50 for basically the whole quarter. So Yeah, well, they had the we really wind, they made good use of that. out of that D50. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so it's just sort of looking about getting that sort of control and composure in our D50 to sort of find those little marks to sort of progress down the field a bit more and then we could have become a bit more attacking, like, We probably went in to sort of save the game a bit early, but, I mean, that's just something we have to learn from and try and improve in the future. You did mention you've got North Melbourne this week. So is that an exciting challenge that you've got coming up this week? Obviously, you've got to to come to Melbourne and take them on. Are you looking forward to that? But is it also going, we are taking on the best and it's just, it's an exciting sort of time? Yeah, obviously North, like on the weekend, they had the Ds and, um, Melbourne were able to go with them for probably a quarter or two, but then North Melbourne just sort of run over the top of them. So it's going to be a really good challenge for us. And I think with the group that we've got this year, we, like we've matured a lot and it's going to be, yeah, we're obviously looking forward to it and hopefully we can bounce back with a win. Um, and how are you How are you feeling about um, your your whole season so far? Like what, what were the plans when you guys came into the season? Uh, you know, we had some, we and we, we still do have some really high hopes for you guys and, and playing finals footy and that kind of thing. What, what was sort of talked about at the beginning of the season? Yeah, obviously it's sort of early days. I mean, three rounds in, but with such a condensed season and only playing 11 games in total, the goal is to get as many wins on the board and, we obviously are striving to get into finals footy and that um, loss on the weekend probably didn't do us any justice. But, I mean, we just have to sort of bounce back from that, take the learnings from the game and sort of try and get as many wins on the board so we can um, go for a run at winning a premiership, hopefully. And how are you feeling about the, the midweek games? Are you excited about them? Yeah, it's going to be a bit tricky, but, <laughs> I mean, I was just watching a lot of the games <laughs> Throughout the weekend as well, and you're seeing a lot of injuries already happening, mm-hmm. and we haven't even sort of gone into that condensed fixture. But I mean, like, it's an extra game for us, so it's a challenge. But I mean, like, yeah, we're grateful that we can get 11 games in, and hopefully, like, in the near future, that we're just getting a lot more games for the season because obviously it's pretty short. For you, so this has been obviously first integration into AFLW, but you've been involved with Port for a few years. How's that step been from being a part of their academy into the AFL setup? Like, uh, obviously, it becomes your full time job basically. So, ha- how's that transition been? Yeah, obviously, um, a couple of us girls were really lucky to sort of get that expo- exposure, ex- uh, hold on. <laughs> exposure <laughs> to the club over the last. <laughs> Over the last couple of years, like being in the Next Gen Academy, so we were lucky enough to do a couple um, trainings with the girls last year and sort of just build that connection a bit then. So that's really helped transition to us being on the list and, yeah, obviously um, building those relationships and that with the coaches as well has really helped us. And do you talk about that with the some of the older, more experienced players? Like because a lot of them grew up, you know, not having – uh, the pathways that you you've had, um, do they have uh, you know any like 
words of encouragement or, you know, um, or, you know, comparing your upbringing to their upbringing being like, well, back in my day, we didn't have the pathways that you had, so you better be lucky that you even get to play footy. Righto, boomer. (laughs) Yeah, well, all of the girls find me pretty annoying anyway, so we don't really have that many chats. (laughs) Chats and that about that. But Why do yeah, they find you I'm annoying? Extremely lucky, like I, I don't know. Are you um, are you a bit chatty? Are you a chatty <laughs> chatty Kathy or I'm a prankster? No, nah, I do like to do a couple of pranks and that, but I think I'm just jealous of how young I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's nah. fair. I, I'm in fairness. I'm 33. I'm Love jealous it. of anyone that's younger than yeah. me. Um, so. <laughs> We can, we can get to some fun stuff now. We've talked serious yeah, footy yeah, there, yeah. so like you've you've played three games. You've 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 got the rising star nom. You've got your contract extension. Let's talk about like post game. You've you've run around for two hours. You've 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 run your guts out, and you're like, I'm pretty hungry. What's your cheat meal? Oh, I don't really. I'm not really hungry after game. So I, I just like to have pasta. Try and hydrate myself as much as I can. Professional, too professional. <laughs> professional athlete. What well a <laughs> Um, how are you feeling, you know, becoming a professional athlete and, you know, doing your full preseason and, and being really competitive in, in the top league game that you play? Are you enjoying it? Yeah, obviously, like, even, as I said before, being exposed to, like, the club in the last couple of years, like, I've just tried to sort of get as many connections and that as I can to try and put my best foot forward because, obviously, you're only an athlete for hopefully like 10 or so years. So you're trying to do everything as you can to stay in the competition as long as you can and then obviously just become trying to become the best athlete that you can also. Was it always like the sort of that hope and dream to play footy? Like you, you sort of got picked up uh, playing in the SA NFL pretty young when you were 15 years old. Was it just always just footy, all about footy? Yeah. Uh, if it wasn't footy, it probably would have been another sport. I just love being outside and sort of, having a ball in my hand and obviously that sort of like um, being involved in that team environment. I love it, even though most of the girls find me annoying as we <laughs> touched on before, but that's just a part of <laughs> What's just a exuberance. part of it? So. Youthful exuberance. That's a very nice way of putting it. Um, what's your family like on game day? Have you got brothers, sisters and, and parents coming down? Have they got any pre-game rituals that they need to do? Do they need to be left alone? Do they get out? Are they social? Uh, mum's definitely social. She likes, yeah, I just, she's embarrassing, but you got to <laughs> love her. Um, and then, <laughs> and then my dad, um, yeah, he'll just give me, a couple of words to sort of over the, like since I was probably 12 or whatever when I started playing football like you always tell me to like run and take the game on and use my left so yeah he's always reminding me of those sort of words so I can hopefully include that in my game and make them proud. Is, oh. he, is he the one, that's also very sweet and yeah. nice, but is he the one uh, that sits you down maybe it's like on a Monday night at the dinner table and goes, yeah, if you did this here and here and you're like, Dad, shut up, I'm a professional. <laughs> nah, I we don't really talk too much about, like, obviously he wants to be involved as much as he can, but I think he knows what I need and I'm pretty harsh on myself as it is, so I've already been knowing what he's about to say to me <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, I think we're pretty good in that sense. Hmm. Um, you said your mum's embarrassing around the club. What, is she, what has she done that's embarrassing? Is she just there all the time? Oh, like, no, nah, like, in, like, for the showdown, like, she was getting a picture with Thunder, like, our mascot and that, and I'm like, <laughs> Mum, just just stop that. Just chill it's out, It's my Mom. first game, yeah. Mum. You're embarrassing me. Yeah, no, nah, that's, awesome. that's, that's her job, yeah. actually. So we do end these interviews with one. It's 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 not a tough question. It's more just a bit of fun that Bryony comes up with, and it has nothing to do with footy, really. Yeah. But take it away. Okay. So final question. Um, I'm going to give you a scenario, and you're going to tell us what you're going to do with this scenario. So uh, basically, Port make the grand final, and you wake up grand final morning. Um, and you've got no idea where you are, um, but you wake up, you're in this room, 
and you're like, okay, I've got to get out of here, got to get to my grand final. You go to leave and you grab the door and the door handle falls off. And so you cannot get out of this room. You search frantically, you find your phone. Your phone's got 1% battery on it, 1%. You've got one phone call that you're able to make to help get you out. Who are you calling that's going to make sure that you make it to the grand final? And who are you definitely not calling from your team? Who's going to get you the grand final? <laughs> um, I'd probably call maybe, uh, maybe Ange or Jersey, just because I think that they've got some like experience about them, you know. Yeah, I think of, that they're bit of wisdom. Smart, so they'd be able to. Yeah, so I reckon they'd be able to help me out of that situation. Be able to get you out. Who's and then who's definitely probably, not getting you out? I'd probably. Avoid calling Loz Young because one, <laughs> she probably wouldn't pick up the phone anyway, <laughs> and two, yeah. she would have no idea what to do. I yeah. thought another great addition to this question would be: Who are, in an opposition team would you call if you're only allowed to call opposition? Who Anne Hatchard. You, you you call Anne Hatchard. Run That's your go-to. Run in straight the through the whole of AFL. Anne Hatchard would run straight through the door. Excellent. Um, tonight, who would you call if it well. was? Well, you're calling Hatch Hard as well. Yeah, well, she's, look, I'm just trying to think, yeah, like she'd be able to knock down the door for me. So, yeah. <laughs> hey. I love that. I hope we get Anne on the show at some stage. <laughs> Anne, can you run through a door for us? <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for joining us on <laughs> AFLW Today. Shanae, this has been great. Good luck not only this weekend against North Melbourne and later on for the rest of the season. No pressure, but I think you're going to win the Rising Star. Wow, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on. And, yeah, not sure about the rising star, but thanks for that. Good luck for it, mate. Thanks, Janae. We've got to talk about the footy. Uh, let's start with the ladder <laughs> check from the weekend. St Kilda are still on top of the ladder. Nick Del Santo's like, my team's still not going good. It, He's the hardest taskmaster in the world. It's awesome. I it's, love it. It's so good. Who had um, Richmond above Brisbane after round three? Uh, not you, because you're a hater. <laughs> I do not hate them. Yeah, but you were a hater on Richmond in their list. Uh, Adelaide, of course, they're in uh, second on 200%. North Melbourne, another, with their draw there, they are third, so they'll have that lucky but also unlucky draw later in the season. Mm -hmm. Richmond, after belting the Swans into fourth, they've bounced back after losing to West Coast. That's going to be that one. We're like, Remember when Richmond lost to West Coast? <laughs> uh, Hawthorne sort of got brought back down to earth down in fifth. Brisbane, big win up into sixth. Frio stayed in seventh despite losing. Who had West Coast in their top eight after three games? <laughs> Hands up. Zero. No one had it on their bingo card no at all. Did you, Jess? No. 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 I, I, to be honest, I look, at, I look at the top eight and think maybe three of those teams I would have comfortably said were in the top eight yep. Yeah, at this stage yeah. of the season. I reckon, um, I reckon we might have had three, possibly fours. We were Hawthorne Truth as early. Yeah, we were. Yeah, yeah, we got. Well, I wasn't. Or maybe we, I should yeah. have been. <laughs> well, we, were, we, were, we were like, okay, we think they're good. Show it to us. But we yeah. we had belief in St Kilda, so we, we're ticking that one all season. Our uh, Carlton up into ninth. GWS. I'm. I don't know how they drew that. Maybe the choking that that happened to the men's team just slid down to Canberra. I don't know what went wrong there. Oh, there was injuries. Come yeah. on. There was a few I, things I going on. Swans fan. <laughs> yeah, I got okay. to whack right. GWS. Right. When yeah, I yeah clearly. They talk that much rubbish about the Swans on social media. Just whenever I can clip them, I'll do it. Uh, Port Adelaide, they got brought back down to earth on Saturday afternoon. Uh, the Bombers went up despite losing. That's because the Swans got smashed. The Ds are in 14th, which is not great. Oh. And the bottom four stayed the same. Geelong still in 15th, Gold Coast in 16th, Collingwood. There are concerns there, and the team we all thought would be last, the Western Bulldogs. Not great. <sighs> so let's do that. Let's talk about the Western Bulldogs because they played West Coast on a Thursday night. I love Thursday night footy. How uh, good was that? Yeah. I really enjoyed it, which makes me look even more forward to the next four weeks when we've got footy every night of the week except Monday. Yes, yeah, so I, I did hear that. For the next four weeks except for Monday nights, we have footy. Every night. Yeah. Win, Every win. day Homer in the from here machine. to October 13, except for Mondays and AFL Men's Grand Final Day. That's How good. That's good. I'm what like, Homer in the donut day? machine, just feed me footy. Yeah. Just give me footy. <laughs> I'll be watching so much footy. Uh, yeah, Sorry. exactly. This was a good game. Right? Very good game at Whitnoble. Yeah. Competitive. Should the Bulldogs have won the game? 
they looked pretty good early on, didn't mm. they? They had really great um, tackle pressure, um, and I think West Coast definitely felt that uh, in the beginning. There are a few um, drop marks, misses on goal, and that kind of stuff. Um, and I thought the dogs, yeah, they sort of dominated and looked pretty good early on, and then no, <laughs> <laughs> they they bulldogsed it. Is that a, <laughs> a is, is that a phrase? Yeah, look, you can. I no, it's not. It, no, it's not. It, but also, it, it probably did help that uh, Drennan and, and then Ella Roberts just decided to show everyone that she's like, I'm going to be the best what player in the league. Honestly, yeah, what a beautiful player. Yeah, so good to watch. I think. Firstly, how good does the Witten Oval redevelopment look? It yeah. looks cool. It was Correct. amazing. Um, yeah. I think the dogs can be. I mean, I know they're going to be disappointed not to get over the line in a close game that was winnable in the end. But I think it was a much improved performance from the opening rounds, and Agreed. I think that's going to be really key for the dogs in 2024 is to improve week by yeah. week. Uh, they've, they had, what, eight new faces in round one. They, you know, were beaten comprehensively by Port Adelaide, but they didn't score a goal in in week two at the MCG. But to come back at home celebrating the new redevelopment, I thought I thought there were a lot of positives they could mm. take out of that game. Yeah. I, I agree. For me, it just showed, like, how bad they were against Port. It's like, okay, there's something that's been built on upon last week. Uh, also, I think Greg... She may absolutely annihilate herself with some injuries because she throws herself at the contest. <laughs> it's wild. But just the excitement she's going to bring to that team, it's that when you need a beacon of hope going forward, it's like, okay, we're just going to hook our tail to that wagon and off we go. Grig is the beacon of hope. Yeah. I really like that. Isn't she exciting? She's just electric. When she gets near it, she just absolutely throws herself at the ball um, and was really instrumental in a, in a few of their goals they got as well. Absolutely. And you love watching particularly young players just take the game on mm. and just, like no you said. No fear. Yeah, no fear. Um, that's the, the best way to learn. It's the headless chook vibe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm absolutely here for, yeah. here for it. You know, um, Matea Breed as well, at Hawthorne, similar vibes. Yes. Just, you We've know, talked and about her a lot on the pod. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so imagine where she's going to be in the next two, three years. It's exciting, uh, isn't it? Yeah, I think the, the AFLW competition's in very, very great hands. We're talking about this from a five-possession game. Yeah. <laughs> a five-possession game. Yeah. But it's the one percentage yeah. that she brings. So it's, it's Tackle the tackling, um, you know, like, but you just see her closing speed, like it's the second, third efforts, just yeah. all of that. Um, so you can't sort of um, judge her on her disposals yet. Mm. Um, but it's it's the vibe. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the, the vibe, vibe yeah. isn't it? We are pure vibes on this show. <laughs> yeah, this is great. it's pretty much as all we talk about yeah, is, is the vibe. Is the vibe? The, vibe, yeah. the vibes up there. They still need to help uh, build and develop that mid and forward connection. It's Ooh, really yeah. missing. They get yep. the footy, and it's like, what do we do? We've got no one to kick it to. solid to kick it to. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just the like West Coast in those first couple of games, kick it to space and yep. try and use your leg speed to catch them out. Yeah. But we look at the flip side of West Coast, just. Daisy Pierce just decided to just prove me wrong. Just yeah. Cheat code. <laughs> he was very, like, not on the Daisy bandwagon. I'm not sure where you sit on the Daisy bandwagon, but I'm big. I'm pro Daisy. I'm PD. And um, <laughs> I was just like, you got to let the master do her work. Mm -hmm. And people have already talked about how great it is to play for her, play with her, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and we're seeing it yeah. in, in West Coast. Um, She's got them working hard. Yeah, she does. Um, I thought Drennan was really good on the weekend as well. 26 possessions, mm. but 12 tackles. Yeah. Like that is just commitment, well, isn't they, it? They won the tackle count by 15. So it showed that they just, like that Daisy said at the start of the season, work on the fundamentals, get that right, and we'll start winning games of footy. The two and one. So I really can't argue with it. Mm. Ali Drennan's a really good pickup. Mm. And I think she, I think she almost flies under the radar a little bit in terms mm. of how important structurally she is to the teams that she played for. So she's, you know, um, St Kilda North before going to Gold Coast. She's the best and fairest winner at the Suns. Um, you know, when she was at the Suns, it was it was Row Bottom who kind of, you know, yeah, got, yeah, got yeah, a lot got of the, the, name, yep. um, the, the, the accolades or, or, the, or the attention. But Ali Drennan right there doing a lot of the grunt work and she's going to provide that, mm. that role again for West Coast. Just so super important. Mm. Um, I love, she's consistent. Uh, she's experienced, um, great in the contest. I think she's a really, really smart pickup for West Coast. Mm. Now do we just want to spend like five minutes talking about how good Ella Roberts' game was? Just, <laughs> just, just, like just, just I thought every, everything that she did worked. There's also, mm. there's a swagger to her game as well. It's like you've not played much footy, but I'm on board. Mm. Yeah. And this is what gets me really excited about the future of the AFLW is seeing players like that who are natural footballers, who've come through and played footy for a number of years and the way that she glides across the ground, yeah. her skills, um, her footy IQ, 
Uh, it's just, it's so, so exciting yep. um, and just a beautiful football to watch. Yeah. How the fan base is feeling. Dogs, we, we, were, we were better. I'm going with that. We were better. Yeah, dogs are getting like their fan base kind of like a little bit, you know, maybe there's a couple of little positives. We spoke last week about But how. also like don't, don't be too into <laughs> Ellie, please dig We on. talked about how they're sort of, they're not really looking at wins and losses at the moment. They're just looking at improving, you know, certain parts of their game. And I think that they did that on the weekend. So I think the fan bases can be like, yeah, well done team. And West Coast are just like, we've won two games. This is more than we thought we might win all year. This is great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're happy. Let's move to Friday afternoon. Side note, the start time of this game sucked. You hated the start time. 5.05. It's just inconvenient for everyone. How are you going to build a crowd when you've got the reigning Premier playing a Premier team in the competition, not as in skill, but as in fan base and following, at 5.05 in Ipswich? It was actually a good crowd there. <laughs> I, was, I was watching, but it's like it could have been better if it was like six. I know you didn't yep. want to clash with the final and everything, but come it makes on. Makes sense. There's, there's, yeah. Yeah. Method to the madness, and mm -hmm. people might have tuned in before watching the finals as well. Yeah. But Brisbane gave a footballing lesson to Collingwood after quarter time, 72 to 20. This was the Sophie Conway show, I thought. I really love it when Sophie Conway plays well because I feel like she's like that Drennan vibe as well. She's always a little bit underrated and she's so solid and reliable. And then on the weekend, she just comes out and kicks three goals. Yeah. Amazing. And I mean, that's, I feel like Brisbane, if it's, if Dakota Davidson isn't kicking three, Sophie Conway will bob up and kick yeah. three. Taylor Smith was also great. She kicked yeah. three in the day. Yeah. Um, and Dakota Davidson um, was held uh, goalless. Um, a massive shout out to Lucy Cronin, mm. uh, the young draftee for the Pies to keep her goalless, but um, yep, you may be able to contain one, but there's always a few in Brisbane that will pop up. But yeah, Sophie Calmway, she was amazing and and kicking them from the, the boundary and she's just so smart yeah. and, yeah. you know, she obviously patrols that wing really well, but she can go in, into the midfield. We saw that a bit on on Friday night as well. And uh, yeah, as a former teammate of, of hers um, back there in Brizzy, I just love seeing her mm. just dominate on the big stage. Yeah, so she's awesome. Collingwood bought the heat early and then forgot to bring the heat. It was great. And I'm like, oh, th no, it's not going to happen. It was, I'm, I have concerns out of this given it, they've put in a 20 minute effort and then have got completely wiped off the face of the earth. Yeah. I, I know it's Brisbane, but they just got deleted after quarter time. Yeah. I think it's, it, it just shows the difference in quality of the two teams. Yeah. Like, you know, you can pump up a team to, you know, um, bring the pressure and the vibe straight away, you know, in the, in the pregame and that kind of stuff. And, but then I think after the, the 20 sort of minute mark after that first quarter, then yeah. there's like, okay, we've got a whole other three quarters to play. And if you don't have the skill and the fitness and, and you're up against one of the best teams in the league, you haven't got much, much to do, have mm. you? Lapses will cost you and um, Collingwood were good in patches, but a team like Brisbane, if you, if you give them an inch, they'll take mm. a mile and, and yeah, Pies kicked first goal of the game. Brisbane sort of responded with the next seven. They just, they, <laughs> it was just, you know, but yeah, it's, it, it's, I'm, I'm trying to look at Collingwood and go, they have a massive injury list. Yep. They're using their top ups and train on their players. Their strength and conditioning coach left after four months. It's mm. like, they've, they've got some challenges on that front, but then you sort of see that they can match it with, with mm. good sides. And they just kind of let themselves down. Like, like I said, with some, some patches and games and then get um, blown out of the water. So you kind of, you know, how much you kind of use the the injuries as as an excuse. Um, they're, they're better than their first, they are better, their first right? three games. You yeah, look at the list, better. Yeah. you've got incredible players on there, you yeah. know, and, and you, they're not doing much yeah. to string it together, you know what I mean? So I'll be really interested to see how they respond in the next few weeks, particularly on Tuesday night that yeah. we'll get to in a moment against West Coast. That is a huge yeah. opportunity. So, yeah, they were – supremely sloppy with the footy, I thought, in second, third, and fourth quarter. And Brisbane just like, ah, oh, that's cool. We're just going to waltz straight through the midfield there. And the thing that I noticed for Brisbane in those parts compared to Collingwood was their tackles were sticking. Mm. It wasn't just, just sticking one arm out and it's sort of flailing off. It is not. We're just going to drive in, get you. If we have to get a contested ball, we will. I, I can't talk enough about how good Bell Doors was as well. Dangerous mm -hmm. all night. I figured out what it was with Britt Benici. We've talked about her efficiency with the <laughs> Disposal footy. efficiency is like Getting a lot zero. of it. <laughs> Paid close attention. You're like, you know yeah. when you specifically pay close attention to one player when you're mm -hmm. watching them? She keeps getting the footy and she keeps snapping it. Like yeah. on the run doing a snap. So I was like, eh, what are we? I know you're under pressure, but 
it's not helping it when you're snapping and it's just going straight up in the air. Yeah. Like, I know she's finding a lot of the footy, but it's just. And that's those, what teams like yeah. Brisbane and Adelaide will do to you is you may, you may get lots of disposals, but they're not going to be quality yeah. ones yeah. because of that pressure. And it's it's also tackling pressure, mm. perceived pressure when yeah. you're playing against it's you're getting like, oh, um, God. sides like that. I think the, the thing to remind ourselves about Collingwood is that they've got a new coach yeah. and he wants to um, introduce a, a different game style and he's figuring out at the moment um, who can fit that that game style. So well, they're having to change. 700 injuries Correct. as well. So, yeah, um, yeah there's there's kind of that um, to think about as well for Collingwood. So, um, yeah, a little bit of a, I guess, a, a readjusting mm. period or a rebuilding period. I yeah. don't know if we can call it rebuilding. Yeah. Well, Because um, I do <laughs> like their list. Um, <laughs> it is good. There are, there are some really, really great players and experienced players there. Uh, but, yeah, they're just sort of figuring figuring out some things at the moment. But um, I have no doubt that they'll be they'll be back. The thing I like about Brisbane, one more thing about Brisbane, is just there's so much movement around the stoppage. Like all their players are just trusted to yeah. do what they're supposed to do. There's always a run-on player. There's always an option to go to. They're doing like blind hand passes over the – like – they just know someone's going to be there to do their job, and I think when you're firing on all all cylinders, it just they just make it look so good and so easy. Fan bases, Brisbane, like, we're good. Cheers, it's good. <laughs> Any win over Collingwood's a good one. Yeah, I think if you're a Brisbane fan, so yeah. Collingwood fans are like, uh, not again. After three weeks. <laughs> Move on to Coffs Harbour International Stadium. I can't believe it's called International Stadium in Coffs Harbour. My beloved Swans got belted off the park. Three goals, four to You get ten. angry about a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> She's only known you for 20 minutes. <laughs> she knows me well. <laughs> knows me well. <laughs> 10 goals, 868 Richmond. Let's talk about Richmond first because they were phenomenal. They were great. Uh, first thing I wanted to point out was Sarah Hosking doesn't wear a mouth guard, and for someone who has such a nice smile, why are you doing that? Where did you find that information? No, I was just watching the game. Because when Sarah got a free kick in the first two minutes and got her head taken off, I was like, she was smiling like, you're not wearing a mouth guard. Isn't she? <laughs> no. Are you sure? I'm 90% sure because I kept paying attention to it any time you saw her. I was like, I swear she's not wearing a I mouth guard. I think it might have to be a thing where you have to. I don't know. I, Maybe she's got like super low profile one. I don't know. It, I swear it wasn't a mouth guard. What are your uh, thoughts on that? Well, are I've you never, questioning never, the info? But maybe. I've just <laughs> because I've never picked up on it. But now I'm thinking, okay, I maybe I have to go and do some investigating. Yeah. I've never actually noticed. Yeah. I'm going to send her a text. Okay, please, because I'm just <laughs> concerned that someone's not wearing a mouth guard playing footy. Boy, Hosko. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think it like, will be like a thing where you have to. Well, I, I know in the men's a lot of players don't. Really? Joe Danaher doesn't wear one. I will refrain yeah. from talking about Joe Danaher. Joey <laughs> <laughs> Duckett's. Uh, so Katie Brennan must be listening to the podcast. I went, <laughs> Alex, all that crap you've talked about me, I'm going to kick three goals on the Swans. Geez, it was good to see her back in yeah, form. Yeah, it was. It's, um, yeah, she's had she's had a rough start. We've talked about it uh, a lot on the pod. Um, but, yeah. I didn't get near it after this first quarter, though. I, I know. Know. You've got to say something critical about her. But, yeah, she was still, um, she was still instrumental yeah. in that. Ellie McKenzie was just waltzing through the midfield. It was just like, any anyone want to tackle her? No, okay, just get another, another centre clearance. It was great. They took 16 marks inside 50. I thought their delivery inside their forward line all day was brilliant, as evidenced by the scoreboard. Uh, I think, are the Tigers, are they back, or is this them beating on a team that's not going great? I would say the latter. What would you say? Yeah, I think Sydney have some troubles. They have some issues um, at the moment. But credit to Richmond. And and I think it's so exciting to see Ellie McKenzie back playing mm -hmm. good for you. She only played one game last year. She's obviously a former number one draft pick. She was runner up in the club best and fairest in her first year at the Tigers and has had some injury troubles since then. But with a clean bill of health and some consistency, mm -hmm. I really think that she can be among uh, the competition's elite players. Just so powerful and explosive. And, mm -hmm. yeah, I love watching her play footy. So um, it's good to see her playing some good footy. It was good for Richmond to also do this while Mon Conti was held a, mm. to a degree. Only had 17 touches, but there was flashes where she just imposed herself on the game. It's like, oh, yeah, you're really good. Yeah. The Swans. I'm I'm not mad. Actually, I am mad. You are mad. I am mad. Yeah. Like, for the you're dis you said you're not mad. You're just disappointed. Should you we went just take full a step mum. back yeah. and just kind of listen to a monologue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. <laughs> so You've got your podcast, mate. Go for it. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm a middle-aged white man with a podcast. Let's go. <laughs> All right, let's start with the positives. Without Laura Gardner and Montana Ham, this would have been gross. This would have been really disgusting. Laura Gardner is phenomenal. And Montana Ham, who still can't play a full game for midfield, second year of footy, understandable was fantastic. 
when she plays a full game in the midfield, she's going to be awesome, Montana Hamlet. Just the size, the strength, and like the, just being a natural footy player. Beck Privatelli played her best game, still missed a fair few chances when she could have kicked the goal. But there were too many passengers in this team on the day. Going forward, they made horrendous decision with the footy. There was one point where Laura Gardner got ignored for just an easy handball receive. They bombed it long to a two-on-one inside 50. Again, said it all year, you have all of this football, but you're not taking advantage of it when you have it in your half. There's, I say it on the men's side with like the Western Bulldogs and Essendon. There's too many dudes, like too many of the same person. Mm-hmm. And it felt like on the weekend the Swans had that because there was no there was no point of difference. I know Ali Morfitt was resting, Cynthia Hamilton didn't play as well. But there was no point of difference on the day and everyone would just felt like 185 centimetres, well, not 185 centimetres, like 180 centimetres, not strong enough and physical enough. They just got blitzed by Richmond, just smashed them off the football. Why was Ella Heads on the resting Ruckman forward? Like Scott, I thought Scott Gowans got his... Uh, match up strong all day. Like, why wasn't Mitchell on the tallest forward? And then again, going forward, they just their decision making was wrong. And then just to sum it all up, in the last quarter, they had a shot twenty five meters out. No one was on the goal line. It bounced five meters short, and Richmond just went, "Cool, we're just going to walk it out." It was great. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can go. I just wow. <sighs> I expect more. I expected more. And that's all we've got time for on the pod today, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And we'll catch you next time. So that's how the fan bases are feeling. We're just like I know some people are, oh, but they tried. Not good enough. Richmond were better on the day. Oh, Richmond, they were. They Richmond were 100% really pulled it better. out. And, and it, it was time for Richmond to pull it out because um, they hadn't been playing great footy. Their key players hadn't been um, uh, yeah. stepping up. I thought Amelia Yassir was really good. Um, she had a direct getting hand. In, getting in the scraps, which was yeah. good. Yeah. Um, and got was give, like one five free kicks uh, across the game as yeah. well. She did uh, cop a knock in the knee. So hopefully she. Oh, please is God. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully she's okay. Um, but yeah, I thought they looked good, the Tigers. Yeah, yeah, they'd be really pleased with mm. how they performed on the weekend. And Sydney, it, it, they are an interesting case because I think that this year was always, always going to be challenging them backing up last yeah. year, um, that fairy tale run into the finals um, and probably caught a few teams off guard last year. And then now the rest of the competition had an off season to kind of look at their game plan and yeah. how to shut them down. And so I, th- I think backing up last year was always going to be a challenge. I think it's also been a challenging week. I think the Chloe Malloy yeah. news um, and how that played out, um, I think, may have had an effect on the players. Only they can tell us that. Mm. Um, Chloe Malloy is a massive loss. You yeah. take out Ali Morfitt, Cynthia Hamilton. Yeah. Like that's it's that's it's huge. tough. Yeah, it's hard um, to do, but it's it was still disappointing from the the decisions that they made when they had their chance to do something. I thought it's yeah, they probably still would have lost, but. You don't lose by nearly 50 points. Richmond fan base is like, we're this good. We're back. Like, <laughs> yeah. We're back. We're back in the back. game. We're back. Yeah. We're back. Yeah. And a percentage booster as well, which is massive mm-hmm. when you get to the end of the year. Now let's get to the most confusing game of the weekend because it was hailing. I was meant to go. I didn't because I had I got caught up with something else. It's Carlton won 4-5-29 to Geelong. Goalless with five behinds. This one we can absolutely put down to the weather. This was... This was nearly a snow game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was horrific conditions to yeah. play footy in. It's it takes you back to your your under nines running around in the mud yeah. like I, yeah. w- I wouldn't know. I play footy in Queensland. We just uh, had a bit of weather. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, I, don't know. I played in a snow game <laughs> in the Riverina when I was like 16. It yeah. was minus 3. Yeah. I got a bruise from taking a mark because it was so cold. <laughs> <laughs> Can't relate. <sighs> yeah. Must be nice. <laughs> Um, what a different Carlton side we saw on the weekend. They, like, we've been talking about they can't string their patches of play together. Yeah. They can't get an involved. Uh, and then we just saw a beautiful game of football from them. Do they um, just like a scrap maybe? Sorry? Do they like a scrap? Yeah. Yeah, I think they do. Uh, I think they, 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 they like to work hard at it sometimes. Yeah. They like to make it a little bit difficult. But, um, no, I thought that Mimi Hill was amazing. Um, I know you're going to have a big chat about Giran because she was just um, incredible. Um, Abby McKay, Keely Shearer. How has um, McKay's season been to oh, start? Yeah, yeah, she's been everywhere. Um, 
I think their midfield, that midfield, That's the four quick. of them together, um, they really are to string together some great passages of play, had a great impact, and they had 17 inside 50s between them, yeah. which was incredible. And that group that you just mentioned, we actually haven't seen them play a lot of footy together because they've always had injuries. At yeah. least, at least you know, some of those mm. players at any one time have always kind of uh, spent some time on the sidelines. So they've always had that great young group of midfielders that has, you know, stacks of talent. Um, and if they can continue to play footy together um, and string a few games together, I think it's super exciting for for Carlton. But it's great to see the future of the Blues, I think, on show on the weekend. Mm. But the, to keep Geelong goalless. goalless. No Presparkus, no Geelong, question mark? Ooh. I think they had a bad day. Yeah. I think their round one loss – was was surprising. I think I expected them to beat Melbourne. Um, but again, that could have gone either way and it yeah. did. It was a two points in the end. Um, then they drew against North Melbourne the next week. And so you kind of look after the first two games and you're like, well, it's okay. You know, like they'll go and a, beat Carlton, it's fine. A, right. Yeah. Like a, a bad loss in round one, but you match it with North Melbourne and you, and you drew. Like that was really impressive. And then I think they just had a bad day. Um <laughs> just credit, a bad day. But credit day credit to Carlton, car. absolutely, because mm. they performed extremely well. Um, but yeah, it's starting to get a bit um yeah, a bit well, Are we concerned with the, their lack the of size? They've got no they've got no height. Yeah, well, yeah, so they're, Lily Pierce. They're, they're Ruckman's they're Ruck. as tall as Stats guy. Yeah, injured her ACL this week at training. Um, so Gabby Featherston was in the Ruck. She's 170 centimetres tall. She was against Jess Good and Bree Moody, <laughs> who are 180, fair. 185. Bree so, Moody is very tall. Yeah, that's 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 some tall people at one, <laughs> 185. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you're absolutely going to struggle there. Mm. And I think that's sort of what happened is what, Matty Gearan just decided to go, oh, I'm just going to be a clearance and contested beast. 21 contested possessions yeah, on the day. Good, wasn't she? But just from the performance from last week and then to go to this performance as well, like completely different conditions, big, hot, muggy day in North Queensland into snow game. And to do that, it's like, oh, okay, this is something to sort of take notice of. Mm-hmm. Eight clearances a goal. And 31 touches in those conditions. That's wild. Yeah. And she's an incredible story. She's had three ACLs in five years, Maddie Guerin. Hasn't had a good run at it. Yeah. And, and I just love seeing players kind of come back and and show us, you know, what they're made of. And, and Maddie Guerin's a fantastic story and I hope that she continues to go the way that she is. Um, she's good for footy. Big mm. tick for Carlton. Absolutely big tick for Carlton. Fan base is Carlton like, are uh, we good? Well, I'm not sure yet. I'd, I'd, I feel like Carlton fan base might be like, Happy to take that one. Yeah. Happy to take that one. Cautiously taking the Cautiously win. Cautiously optimistic. Yes. And Geelong are just like, come on, man. Yeah. Really? We're winless. It really threw, threw a spanner for me, this one. Yeah, yeah big time. Mm. Let's get across to Albertson. Port Adelaide, 4529, Freo, 5737. I'm a big Teeks fan. Julia Teekel, another two goals. <laughs> I mean, they didn't win, but I'm, I'm loving her work at the moment. This is a really good game. I actually... Um, Really enjoyed watching Good it. Good kit matchup too. Yeah. Um, as you said, Julia Tickle was great. Um, but Goody, you know, big fan of Goody, yeah. um, big fan of hers on the pod. I think we're we're interviewing her today. Very exciting. So it'll probably be on before we get to this so point. It so great, it's a great interview. <laughs> great to chat to you. Great to chat to you. We're obviously recording out of order. She's got training this morning. Yeah, no, good. And you should be at training. Um, but God, she's good, isn't she? Yeah. I won't make the joke. <laughs> promised. I promised. He's had a couple of like goody jokes. And oh, then give, us, give us your best with work. With like a too good one as well. Yeah. 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 No, I can't. Yeah. I, I got barred. So yeah. I got yellow okay. Sandra Sully with the late news. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Fremantle coming back to win this. So we were talking about this off air. You weren't surprised at this. Uh, no. Yeah. Not really. Mm. I think, um, I mean, it was, it was, a, it was a fascinating battle. Yeah. Um, I was, I was there calling the game and, you know, really, really intriguing watching it play out. It was a bit of an arm wrestle. It was a good, good game of footy yeah. to watch. Um, and Port had the lead the entire game. And there was a breeze favouring one end. Yeah. So yeah. Fremantle had the breeze in the last quarter. And Port Adelaide tried to save the game in the end and um, mm-hmm. went defensive in the last quarter. Um, they sent Julia Tickle back in defence mm-hmm. and she did – Mm. save a couple of goals. She yeah. was she was really great. Yeah. Um, but then they just had nothing to kick yeah. to. And so um, Fremantle, with their experience and just, yeah, sheer weight of numbers and inside 50s. Um, and the 
two goals to get them in front in the last quarter. Ebony Antonio, Hayley Miller, which was set up by Anya Tai. Yeah. Their stars really rose yeah. to the occasion mm-hmm. in that last quarter. And I just think experience uh, really, really showed in the end. Um, but they had to fight hard yeah. for that, Frio. Like, Port Adelaide are, are big improvers. Uh, I'm excited to see what they do for the rest of the year. Um, but, yeah, Fremantle, they just, um, I think – um, play the conditions a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, was there but a lack I just of think experience told. support, maybe? Did they no, run out of I don't, gas? I don't, I don't think it was fitness. No. no. Okay. No. I just uh, thought maybe they ran out of a bit of bit of run late, but then as you said, they put they put a couple behind the footy. Mm. What I enjoyed was there was beef. I enjoy a bit of beef. Bit of beef? Yeah. Bit bit of argy bargy <laughs> that it's just crept in a little bit more this year. Yeah, and it has been good actually. And I'm like mm. Yeah, yeah, footy. I love a bit of um, physicality on there. Um, you mentioned her before on your tie. Yeah. I love watching that woman play footy. She's just awesome. She's an excitement machine. Like wherever she is in the contest, she has an impact no matter what what she's doing. Um, in the end, um, in that last quarter, Frio were trying, using her as the option every time they went inside 50. And she was on like a three-on-one contest every single time. Like they were doing everything they could to shut her down, but she was still in everything. And I love that about her. Yeah, she's absolutely fantastic. And yeah. she kicked one goal for the game. And this was actually another real positive to, for the Dockers to take out of the game is that in the first couple of rounds, they're probably a little bit too on your tie yeah. centric and yeah. kicking it to, I mean, she's a fantastic player. Why wouldn't you? Um, but they had a spread of goal kickers yeah. um, on the weekend that I think is really, really pleasing for them. Um, and also shout out to Amy Mulholland as well. Her mm-hmm. goal in the last My quarter. Another, another Gaelic footy star um, as well. I'm just so impressed with how some of these Gaelic footballers adapt to yeah. our game. And I know yeah. there are similar skills that kind of go across both codes, but um, their, their Aussie rules footy IQ, I think, yeah. um, is is um, really impressive to me. Um, and, yeah, for Mal Holland, who was a late inclusion, she was originally omitted from the side and came in for Ashley McCarthy, yeah. McCarthy who um, was out with knee soreness. Um, but, yeah, that beautiful, just used it the breeze. Swung and, a mile. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Was like, and clutch as well. Surely, yeah. she's, running around, surely yeah. she's running around on this one. She didn't. She just was yeah. like. Yeah. And I was like. <laughs> That was it was amazing. Yeah. She loved it too. Um, yeah. I thought Mim Strom was really good. Haley Miller, of course, and O'Driscoll love her. Oh really God, solid amazing. In defense. Yeah. yeah, and just got more and more important and better as the game yeah. wore on. Um, and we we're saying off air as well that um, if you want to play finals in the AFLW, these are the kind of kind of games that you have to win and mm-hmm. you have to um, take your opportunity. Yeah. And Fremantle did that on the weekend. It was really impressive. Fan base is port. Oh, that that sucked. Yeah, that would have slip. That would have stung them yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, Frio's fan base are like, okay. Yeah. We're we're back in here. Frio, Frio are vibing. They're just like, yeah, nice. Yeah. This is good. I love this. They've won, sorry, they've won two games. Yeah. At, um, and their loss was against Adelaide. So, exactly. Yeah. It's a solid start. Yeah. Let's get to Adelaide as they beat Hawthorne 58 to 32. First of all, what was doing with the kit matchup? <laughs> Whose idea was that? <laughs> You and your kid. But it was up. horrendous to watch on the TV. <laughs> like watching it, I, when when both p- players had their backs to the footy, it was very hard. If you were calling the game, it would have sucked. <laughs> you didn't call that one, did you? I did, uh, no, I didn't. I watched it on TV. Yeah, yeah. it was it, yeah, a little bit hard. Okay. Now, full disclosure, Jess's brother is the coach of um, Hawthorne, Daniel yes. Webster. Yeah. You were saying before you haven't had a chance to talk to him about the game, so you no, haven't, I haven't. haven't brought any like inside information. <laughs> no, I've got nothing to bring, nothing. sorry. But so I'm you- on my best behaviour because <laughs> I have actually given him a clip twice already this season, and so I'm saying only lovely things about my brother. <laughs> and oh, yeah. I was going to bring up, was he the bad brother? Because they were really badly disciplined yesterday, mm. giving away a couple of 50s that – Kind of not ideal given you've lost by 16 or oh, 26 points. It's, it's 50 meter penalties in AFLW are just so much oh, more then, hurtful. Yeah, 100%. But uh, Daniel Ponta just went, hey, goals record. Mine. How good is Danielle Ponta? I right. love her and I love that she's got the club record now, five goals. That's just awesome. Mm. Uh, everything was great for like Adelaide. We said they've been playing sort of in second gear. We thought Hawthorne were going to try and, th- you know, throw a couple of punches. And, ah, come here, you. Just yeah. give him a little noogie. <laughs> ah, yeah, right. Oh. And then Ebony Marinoff just went, Destin Ferris is mine this year. Yeah, she's really going to have a sniff at it, isn't she? Mm. She's been so good to start this season. 
she's good every season. I know, but I know. just like, but the level she's playing yeah, at she's, is just she's like, she's gone oh. up a gear. But what so are your gonna, thoughts on Eb? Oh, I think she's fantastic. The thing mm. um, about Adelaide is, and Ebony Marinoff and Anne Hatcher, they're so good. They'll keep taking votes off each other. So I think it's going to be yeah. really hard for them ever uh, to win a league, yeah, best gotcha. and fairest. Got, yeah. um, it's Marin- the Jordan Pippen vibe, you yeah. know? Yeah. Marinoff yeah. could be on nine votes from three games, though. Yeah. yeah. I reckon Possibly. she could be. Yeah. It's yeah. like yeah. out that perfect start. Okay. Maybe if Anne takes yeah. one or two off here and there, it's like you've got the good start. And obviously, a new role for her as co captain this year of the Crows. So, and yeah, taking it all in her stride. But he had played such a good side. And we, you know, they finished up the ladder last year and they had a bad final series. But, yeah. you know, um, I feel like we're probably not speaking enough about them them in the premiership contender conversation in yeah. my mind. I think the Crows are a very, yeah. very great side. Um, and a lot for Hawthorne to take out of that game. Yeah. Um, I think they should be pretty pleased with how they went. Obviously, I agree. you know, there was a, a lot to a lot to learn. Obviously, the, the free kicks, you know, giving them away. They conceded four goals to none in the second yeah. quarter, and that was the difference in the end. Yeah. So the fact that they could match it with the Crows for the other three quarters. They ended up um, winning the last quarter, yeah. didn't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah. It's like they're, they're, they're good. They're just not Adelaide level good. But the way that they charge time in that second half, it's like, okay, no, like you can take it up to – we're saying it's a big three. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, what, North North Melbourne – uh, I've just lost Brisbane my words here. Brisbane, Brisbane was the team I was thinking of in Adelaide. Yeah. But they're that team that can finish, you know, four, five, six, seventh yeah. easily. And then they get to a final. Who knows what can happen? Um, look, Fleming was good again, as was Emily Bates, which in a shock to no one, Emily Bates is good at football. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely correct. Like, it's just like, oh, yeah. It, it's it's very funny, like, what, watching these games. Like, still good, still good, still good. Yeah. And, you, and you're just waiting. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, no, Breed finding more goals again. Like, yeah. Okay, this is the... I'm excited for Hawthorne, and I, I'm not a Hawthorne man at all, just in general, but they are so exciting to watch when they just flow. Yep, they really are. And I think, you know, we said in the the preview show that we were really looking forward to this game because obviously yep. they were playing um, Adelaide and we're like, are they going to take it up to them? And, yes, you, it was just that second quarter where I felt like they didn't, and I think that there's some huge positives mm. to take out of that and that they can – not necessarily beat, but actually really take it up to those those top teams. Yeah. And I think I think they were really, really impressive. Love Batesy and yeah. you know how I feel about Breed. Yeah. So yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. There's exciting times at Hawthorne, I think. And like I said, they'll take a lot out mm. of out of that uh, loss against Adelaide. We'll see what happens mm. next. Fan bases, Adelaide are like crumble is better than hockball. We rule. <laughs> uh, and Hawthorne, are like, that's cool. Yeah. They're still cool. I think Hawthorne would be really, really happy yeah. with that. Well, didn't yeah. get smashed. Life's yeah. good. <laughs> Let's get to the smashing. The Demons, 3-3-21, got deleted at Casey Fields by North Melbourne. 11 5 This is the most points Melbourne have ever conceded in a game of football. They're one and two. I got the alarm bells ringing. We, In fairness, we rang those alarm bells We rang the pre-season. alarm bells in the beginning. I had them out of my top eight. Yeah. I'm feeling slightly vindicated at the moment because their start of the year was very tough. Yeah. It, it opens up a little bit, but, oh, I did not see a 50-point drubbing coming. I didn't see that either. I thought North were absolutely going to beat them quite convincingly, but definitely um, not, not by that much. Um, loved seeing a little bit of Biffo with Livy Birch. That was yeah. great. <laughs> Wasn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, come on. I've made the right decision here. Bring it on. <laughs> But from um, who did it come from? The first one she copped one. Was it from Paxi? But then the la- the second one she copped was like from yeah. Kate Hall, and I was yeah. like, oh okay, all right, Katie, get in there, fly the flag, got yeah. to do it. I loved that. Yeah, a little bit of spice in it. You love mm. to see. Yeah, I think. yeah. And yeah. Birchie, Birchie's a player who um does get quite emotional with that stuff. Like she's often like if she gets like pulled off, she's often the hands near like got something to say about it, not aggressively, but a bit like. Not whingy, but she's got something to say about it. And so I feel like if you're going to go after anyone, yeah. uh, every, you know, playing your old team, they were definitely going to have a go at Virtue for that, yeah. for sure. And she had the last laugh, though, didn't Did she? she? Yeah, North were really impressive. And More what I think laugh. is, is, um, is yeah, real exciting about North in the last – uh, yeah, last season and a bit is um, now they're scoring big. Mm. Yeah. So they've always been a really great defensive side. 
um, and they can limit the opposition from scoring, but um, haven't quite, you know, gelled in their front half to put on big scores. And now they're doing that. Mm-hmm. It's very, very scary, I think, for the competition. Mm. They were they were very good. Uh, we'd said in the first few weeks how well Kate Sheila was playing <sighs> and just put it all together. Poor Gab Colvin. I love Gab Colvin. Mm-hmm. W- Wagga represent, but Mike. <laughs> God, Kate Sheila was like taking you to the to the wool shed today. This is she's great. exceptional. How many goals did she end five. up with? Five, yeah. Um, it's a bag. Yeah, it's a bag. It's, it's a, a bag full. It's a it's whole a, handful. Yeah. Well done. Um, yeah, she's phenomenal, isn't she? But like this could have been bigger. Like in the first quarter, North had sixteen inside fifties and only kicked the two goals. So sort of, I guess, credit to the D's for standing up, but also North Melbourne potentially being wasteful. But at the end of the day, this is just a ridiculously big statement going, hey, hey Dees, we're going to wipe you off the floor at yeah. your home deck. Like Ash Riddle just had, uh, Riddell, sorry, had 21 and two at halftime. Like I can't give enough superlatives to how good she played. Mm-hmm. And let's not forget, she was overlooked in two drafts, yeah. including one year where she made the VFLW team of the year. Um, and then and then gets her opportunity. I don't know why. This yeah, goes back to my recruiters don't watch footy yeah. vibe. Like just in general, like. <laughs> I am. I am great. Yep. Yeah, okay. Cool. They. They honestly. Some of yeah. them don't watch footy. Like, yeah. how, how could you overlook someone like that? It's ridiculous. She's uh, almost outshining the uh, the Jazzy Garner this year. Yeah, I think uh, we we had very high hopes for Jazzy Garner, but, and now Ev Marinoff is having her yeah. best season, and Ash Riddell is having an absolute. But again, North Melbourne well. to me are the same as Adelaide, and that they've got a number of stars that will just keep taking yeah. votes yeah. off each other. So, yeah. and Riddell and Garner, are, you know, and those two. Aren't so, those two. Th- there was one. Beautiful passage of play in the second quarter for North. They laid a couple of tackles in their like defensive half back line, and then there was run and carry through the center, a long kick to to the full forward. It was a crumb by O'Loughlin who got the free kick uh, for getting pushed in the back and kicked it. I was like, oh, footy. It's just like <laughs> how good footy. How a coach draws up defensive transition. It was perfect. It was yeah. Like, oh, you're gonna win everything. I'm standing by flag ruse, unbeaten. <laughs> You do stand you, by flag yeah. ruse. I stand by it. Uh, I think, yeah, I think that's a pretty fair statement. Do yeah. you know what scares me about North Melbourne? They can still go better. That and <laughs> the fact that in their first few weeks they've beat, they beat, smashed Brisbane in the grand final rematch. That was Brisbane's biggest ever loss in the AFLW. They were dirty that they drew against Geelong last week and then they've come out and beaten another experienced side. And Melbourne, who we expect to kind of slide down a little bit, I don't have them missing the eight. Oh. Um, but, oh, yeah, but... But because I still think they're they're a good side, yeah. and it might take just a couple of weeks for them to get used to a couple of new players in the side and what have you. But they've still got a lot of class across the field. Um, but then to you know um, Melbourne to concede the most points they ever have in an AFLW game. So for North to do that against two very good teams in the first couple of rounds mm-hmm. like that, it's just scary. Indeed, yeah. I'm excited. So yeah, so yeah. am I. Yeah. So as a North Melbourne fan base, like. <laughs> Yeah, we know we're good. Good to see the pressure lift as well uh, mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. compared to the last week against Geelong. And the D's are like, oh, we've seen this before with our men's team. This is not great. <laughs> Just the slide. It's not It's not good. Like they've got a lot of injury issues as well, the D's. It's not so doom and gloom for the D's. Don't, I'm a don't count them I'm a out. Just, just yeah. a doomsday. I'm a doomsday because I just you know, haven't been happy with how they've started the year. Mm. Uh, let's get to Windy Hill. Essendon 2 3 15, defeated by St Kilda 3 5 23. This game was in the balance all day. This can Essendon go, oh, we probably could have won, but then the Saints are like pulled it out late. I'm I'm very confused about this game. Yeah, Essendon, I still think they're still having the same issues that we've talked about every week, and it's just getting those fundamental rights. Uh, it's about marking the ball. It's about setting up behind play. It's yeah. about, you know, winning the contest, winning the hitouts and that kind of stuff that they just haven't been able to do and being undisciplined. Um, and giving away a couple of 50s, which could have been, you mm. know, the game. Um, also, their their efficiency inside 50 we'll was at year. 20%. Uh. So they had six shots from 30 inside 50s, which is horrific. You're not going to win a game and like that. that. that is shot from, what, 15 metres out with about two minutes to go. It's I know it's it, difficult conditions and all, but at the end of the day, that is just put it down, that's a goal. Yeah. You can't miss those. and. We do have problems with some of the goal kicking at times. It's just that that's a coach killer. You yeah. just sit there going, come on, really? The the one thing. <laughs> yep. St. Kilda are good. Jess, what are your thoughts their on this? Tackling pressure is great. I'm a little bit surprised with their start to the year. Yeah. <laughs> and then again, playing devil's advocate in round one, that big collision between Bonnie yeah. Tugel yeah. and Amber Clark, that rattled them and oh, they yeah. lost and they lost to Frio. Um, backed it up with a good win against West Coast in the West, mm-hmm. um, which was uh, confidence boosting. Yep. I was 
Yeah, I mean, I'm, I thought that they would beat St Kilda, but then when we talk about St Kilda and look at their start to the year, I mean, they're, they're going really well. Yeah. And so you sort of have to kind of maybe think of St Kilda in a different light mm. um, given their start to the year. Mm. So um, I think the first three rounds of the AFLW – uh, it just kind it's of blown it wide open, yeah, hasn't it? right. It's yeah. mind blowing. So yeah. footy is um, somewhat confusing, and it's great. Yeah, mm. so, but I'm loving that. I'm loving seeing some new contenders, some new teams put their hand up and go. I want to play finals in 2024. Mm. Um, and yeah, so it's exciting for the competition. But yeah, very intriguing game. Um, an arm wrestle from start to finish, mm-hmm. um, and St Kilda got the job done in the end. And yeah, they were good mm. to watch. Well, once again, they won the tackling. They won, they won the tackle count. They were plus 22 tackles for the game. Five mm. had eight or more. So the, last week, so I, well, I was at Moorabbin watching the game last week and their pressure and just being able to withstand it as well defensively was yeah. great. They did it again because Eston had more inside 50s again. So Del Santo's got them very well set up structurally and just disciplined. Mm-hmm. And then they can transition well. I know they've only kicked three goals, but they're finding ways to go even without Jesse Wardlaw. It's just... Yeah, because she had a, a quite a quiet game as yeah. well. So the fact that they could get across the line without her firing on all the cylinders is testament to them. Mm. And big opportunity for the Saints this year. I think of the of last year's top four, they only play Adelaide and Brisbane. Okay. And so they've got a pretty good fixture and they're mm. obviously making the most of their opportunities in the early rounds. So, and yeah, on top of the ladder, I mean, God, if you're a Saints fan, yeah, get on board. Oh, they are absolutely up and about. We've got a couple in the office here. They're just like, this is great. Mm. Uh, so <laughs> fan base is Essendon and like, Mm, that's annoying. I'm not going to doom them this week because that was a game they could have won. I know you've I've only them. picked them in round one and that's <laughs> I had them at top. I'm sorry, Bob. I, I had them I'm charging sorry. into I had them as the team that was going to charge in the top four this year. Mm. Got that one wrong. Uh St. Kilda like this is great. Life's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. No, you're not happy. I'm not. Yeah. I'm disappointed. I'm not angry. I'm disappointed. Bombers. Get to the mad stage. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's get to the draw. Monica Oval, GWS and Gold Coast, five goals, six apiece, 36. GWS, honestly, it, just not, this isn't like a, this is a, just a laugh. Like they've given up the ghost in the men's game and then they've kicked the goal late to get in front and then a goal after the siren to draw it. You'd just be walking through with some sage. At, 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 <laughs> Out, 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 Palo Santo. Out, out west, like it's, uh, Toby Green's doing his Mad Monday thing, but he's walking around with some sage going, this this sucks. Yeah. They, Jeez, it was a good game oh, though, wasn't great. it? Oh, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. You thought you, you're like in, in that final quarter, you thought it was over. No. Just me just yeah. screaming into our group chat going, no way, yeah. boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're on the group chat. You're up and about. And oh, that was great. I love Jamie Stanton's reaction when she kicked the yeah. – the goal to draw it at the end. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I like back her in every day of the week. She's yeah. a beautiful kick of the Great footy kick. Um, and really experienced. But, uh, but yeah, she loved it. And, and it was it just like they won, show, wasn't it? Well, yeah, yeah. but th- they had to get some points out of that game. It's been a really disappointing start to the season yep. for the mm-hmm. Suns. I expected a little bit better from them yep. uh, in the opening couple of rounds. Um, so just to get some points on the board um, was, was really important for them. Um, and yeah, we'll really lift the group, I think. But, um, but yeah, it shows how much it meant to them. Yeah. Sure. I had them finishing fourth. Uh, I had them in top four. I mean, we, we get them wrong now. Yeah, then. we like, do I've get got them a couple wrong. wrong. Um, <laughs> you'd think that coaches watching this game would go, so Charlie Robottom gets a lot of the footy. We might want to stop that. Mm-hmm. 42 disposals, sec- equal second highest amount in AFLW history, absolutely everywhere, and then was just setting up setting up in the forward line to lock the footy in late. Like, mm-hmm. Can you come to Sydney, please? Like, join James, <laughs> please. He was there on, on. He was there last night. Come to Sydney. It's great. It's a bit more expensive than the Gold Coast, but it's not as humid. I think, <laughs> in terms of trying to tag her, I think it's easier said than done yeah. because she's so strong. She's yeah, yeah, very hard to tackle. Hard yeah, to, hard yeah. To, you can tell that her and James have just grown up tackling each other. Yeah. Like that's it because yeah. they're, that they are just inside midfield beasts. She yeah. is so good. For GWS, they were stiff. A lot of injuries have probably cost them the win here. This, that's when you look back, it's like, oh no, we weren't unlucky. It's like we were down three players for the majority of the game. Yeah, I feel bad for them in this instance. Um, thought Tani Evans was good. Uh, I just, it's an opportunity missed. 
Whereas Gold Coast, like, this is great. We've got some points out of it. Yeah. Those injuries hurt. And we forget that the Giants have one of the youngest lists too in the mm. AFL oh, W they competition. Do, don't they? Yeah, yeah. So they're still a very, very young side. Um, yeah, they, they'd be disappointed to lose it. But again, you when you're down a one on the bench, um, you can't help it. It's, <laughs> it's, it, it you're was doing gonna, the best yeah, that you can. Right. Yep. And it's yeah. on, on the big, big ground that is Marnica Oval as well, playing yeah. 16 aside. I forgot to mention that in the Coffs Harbour game at Sydney Richmond. That ground is massive. It was huge. Like mm. 16 aside would absolutely gas them out. Mm -hmm. and the same with Marnie Caroval. So GWS, it's a quick turnaround because they've got to play the Swans in a in a battle of the bridge on Sunday afternoon. That's going to be fascinating. Yeah, that's going to be a good I one. don't know what to expect. Yeah. It's going to be great. Uh, fan base is GWS like, oh, that's, that's, that's annoying. And Gold Coast like, how good? How good? We go <laughs> like fr from despair to it's a draw, but it's probably it's relief, a relief, I think, yeah, a little bit yeah. for the Suns. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. That, yeah, to start zero and three would not have mm. mattered. All right, let's quickly talk about this. We've got, we've got the Festival of Footy starting, so we've got two games coming up before we do our Thursday show. So first of all, we have Collingwood and West Coast at Icon Park on Tuesday night, so tomorrow night, 7.15 p.m. Can West Coast go three in one? Yes is the yes. short answer. Yes. yes. I like it. <laughs> this is without doing like any 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 deep diving to this, but Collingwood have won the two games against the uh, against West Coast in their history, 46-22 and 38-11. But just the way both teams are playing at the moment, the fact West Coast have been here in Melbourne all weekend and Collingwood have had to go to Brisbane and come back, surely a bit of an advantage with one day less rest as well. And Daisy would just want to beat Collingwood because she's an XD. Well, everyone wants to beat Collingwood. Yeah. But so Collingwood are uh, favourites in this game. I don't know how or why, but I'm going to tip West Coast. I'm going to tip West Coast as well. I think Collingwood will take. I think West Coast is going to need to play their best footy to yep. beat them for sure. Um, but yeah, I think I think they can do it. I'm going to back the Pies to turn it around. Okay, just Ooh. but if they don't play the best and West Coast does, then West yeah. Coast will beat them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and in the case of what the margin's going to be on Wednesday night at Brighton Homes Arena, Brisbane <laughs> oh, play God. the Western Bulldogs. This, and if they don't have Ellie Blackburn. Yeah, surely Ellie Blackburn's not on the plane because the way that, that she screamed out in pain on Thursday night, six day backup and a flight, <laughs> this could get ugly. Uh, yeah, this could be like a seventy pointer. Okay, do we want? Do we want to have a? I, I know it's 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 unfair to the Bulldogs. They are showing. They have shown in the last couple of weeks. Each week there has been improvement. But the way Brisbane played last Friday against Collingwood, there is no way they lose this game of football. Yeah. There is no way they don't win this by less than five goals. It'll be really interesting to see how they approach it because, of course, we've got midweek footy and yeah. fixture crunch. Uh, they played the Dogs on Wednesday. Brisbane then fly to play West Coast on Sunday night. Yes. So I think they play the Dogs. They then fly out to Perth either the the next day, like Thursday, Thursday or Friday. Um so do they rest some players? I don't know. Um, yeah, definitely expect them to win. Um, mm. But, yeah, That's their approach to it will be interesting. Yeah, I reckon would, they might rest. Or Well, the thing is is that I don't think we'll see that a lot with midweek footy, only because of list sizes, yeah. or only 30 players. You just don't have the players to rest. However, mm, Brisbane do actually have a relatively um, – like healthy list. Yeah, they don't yeah. have a lot, of, yeah. a lot of players, if any, really, on their injury list. So, you know, do they use this opportunity to blood some of their draftees and um, like they did last weekend, They um, Sophie Peters came in for a first game mm. against the Pies. So will we see another debutante and kind of expose them um, to AFLW? Um, who knows? But, yeah, I'll be, yeah it'll be interesting. interesting to see what they yeah. do with it. Yeah. Yeah. Could be, yeah, could be heavy rotation, but, yeah, this is this screams 10 goals. Yeah, yeah. and this will also be a very big test on how many people show up to the game. Midweek footy. Yeah. Well, yeah. so we've Out got there in Ipswich yeah. on a Wednesday yes. against a team on the bottom of the ladder. So. At least it's seven fifteen, so that's a, that's a good starting point. Mm -hmm. So Thursday night seven fifteen as well. So at least at least the starting times are good. I'm going to be very interested to see uh, the crowds on Saturday. At least there's only one game in Melbourne, and it's well before the preliminary final at the MCG. So very interesting interesting week of footy ahead. But before we go, uh, I don't have tipping results here. I forgot to calculate them this morning. I think I've I got, got I've got them here. I think I got four or five. I got one, two, oh my God, three, four. Okay, I got five and uh, you got five. six. Yes! Who did How you? How did I get six? Oh, maybe I we both got swans. six. Hang on, we both got six. Okay, I'll take that. We've got Eagles, Lions, Adelaide, North, St. Kilda. I see that tip, St. Kilda. Yeah, and the draw gets us a point. We take a point for the draw. Oh, yeah, and we okay, we take a point for the draw. I was like, hang yeah. on. Uh, yeah. While you're doing that, full credit, full credit, who's been the best team that you've seen this weekend? North. 
North. Yeah. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're impressive. But yeah. I'm I'm really yeah. impressed by St Kilda. Yeah. I'll I'll give I'll give some love to Brisbane for the way that they just bashed uh, Collingwood off the park. Best on ground, Ella Roberts. Best on ground for the weekend. I know there's probably others that have had better games of footy, but mm-hmm. just the impact she had on such a close game, Ella Roberts. I'm going uh, Ed Marinoff, Danielle Ponta. <laughs> doing a duo. Obvious, yeah. Could have been Kate Sheila or kicking five as well. Yeah. Yeah, Ed, Ed Marinoff. Yeah. Yep. Fair, fair. Uh, we're running out of time, so we don't have time for a bad review. You can save that till <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> You can prepare it because we do have one from last week. Shout out to that dude who said AFLW is a waste of time. You are a loser. (laughs) Anyway, that'll do us for AFLW today. Well, for today, we'll be back on Thursday to talk about Tuesday night, Wednesday night footy, and then look at the weekend ahead. God, I love footy. It's going to be a big couple of weeks. Yes. Take yourselves in, folks. So big thanks to Bronnie for jumping on. Thank you to our professional Jess Webster (laughs) for joining us. Thanks, guys. Lots of fun. Uh, remember to smash a like across the socials so you can see us filling in all of your footy gaps throughout the AFL and AFLW season. Remember to subscribe on YouTube, like, thumbs up, all that good stuff. If you hit the bell, you get a subscribe, you get a notification when the videos drop. As well, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X AFLW Today. Make sure you follow our other shows, AFL Today. You're already on this channel, so go have a look at our wrap up of the semi-finals. Of course, a massive weekend coming up ahead in preliminary final week. Cricket Today, Football Today, NFL Australia. Hold all tickets if you like your horse racing. Everything is up and going except for NBA. That'll be back in a few weeks' time. That's enough plugs. We'll catch you later this week for more AFL Today. Until then, look after yourselves and remember, footy's back. Footy's back. Footy's back.